this beautiful spot. Very heavy, Peggy. <laughs> we did so many amazing things. We went to our first wine tasting with Mateo. We spent the weekend with the guys from Santiago. There it is. Oh. And we are here in a winery and they have like a nice spot where we could park those days. And now the guys are taking some metal pieces that they use it to level the truck. There it is, guys in action. Strong boys. So hi guys. So this morning we have beginning of March. Um, and I was thinking a lot about this uh, situation. We are in Europe and like you guys know, uh, yeah, Russia and Putin have decided to attack the Ukraine. Um, yeah, that said, uh, I just wanted to tell you our standpoint in regards of war. So I don't know what this is going to do uh, out there. And I don't want to have, you know, like a storm or create something here. This is just an opinion. Sure. We might look like we are coming in war, but we don't. Um, we come in peace all the time and we actually are totally against war of any kind and it doesn't matter who attacks who i mean it matters eventually i guess but uh, for us it's just we want peace on this planet and uh, i think uh, there are a lot of people out there that think the same thing why do we have in our times to have a war like killing people hurting people it is um, not really cool to do this in our times so why I address this to you now, yeah, we are traveling in this vehicle and we are fortunate to say, okay, we can move. So there are other people on this planet that are not. Uh, you would have to look what's happening on the border in Poland uh, at the moment. They are all coming uh, from Ukraine, the women and uh, the mothers and the daughters and kids and everything, because they're fleeing. They don't want to be killed. And this is not only Ukrainians at the moment. This situation we have on our planet already, I don't know. Like, I cannot remember where there is no war on this planet. So Afghanistan, Iran, Iraq, you know, just to mention a few, uh, Syria conflict, you know. So uh, now in Europe it arrived, I guess. I mean, you know, it's really close. So people are now aware of it a little bit more and uh, afraid obviously of a third world war the point is what can you do to help you know um we have we have had some uh some activities online on our instagram where you can buy uh the, the sleeping bags you know and they get sent with the red cross uh, the company Krug is very involved in Ukraine. You saw the last videos. They are shipping constantly right now full trucks with, uh, you know, diapers or whatever is needed for the people that are fleeing right now at the border and uh, also bringing back people. You know? So what also we do, I didn't publish this because it's none of, you know, it's really personal or whatever. This is just an opinion. But I think right now is, is a good time to mention it. Yeah, we help. We try to give shout outs to you guys, you know, with some small action. But the big action, what we do, we never talked about it. Since about 10 years, we are giving our houses at home. That's why we, that was actually one reason. We were in a big house and uh, we were saying, yeah, we don't need this big house, you know, we want to travel the world. So what are we doing? So we said, okay, let's do something good. And then the crisis in 2015 came where uh, Germany and Angela Merkel said, okay, welcome refugees, and they come, and then, yeah, but where are we gonna put them? And Germany doesn't let people on the street. I mean, they try to not to. We rent already since 2015, uh, two houses to refugees and job finance, by the way. And we had several hundreds of people were living there. And at the moment, at this stage, there are 22 people living there. And it's gonna be, yeah, it's going to be more because Ukrainian people are going to come and it's going to be rearranged. So this is what happened. So it, this is we are an extreme. We gave everything away to that people can live and have a home and instead of living in a war zone. But I think if you ask, you know, yourself, you have those big houses or whatever. What are you doing? You have a basement apartment. You have, I don't know, a spare room. 
I'm not saying you have to, but this is a great idea what you can help without interfering at the border and just trying to ask the people, what, are we do, what can we do? No, just say maybe go to your local authorities, ask them what they're doing right now with all the refugees. Do you have enough housing, whatever? Just ask, you know, that doesn't hurt you there and it doesn't interfere in the war. And if they say, oh yeah, actually we have a lot of uh, refugees coming in. Uh, do you have a place where they could medium term, short term or long term, whatever, everything helps that they're off the streets. So this is something, yeah, I don't know what this is gonna do, but I'm really sorry to mention that, but this is in my heart and I am an emotional person. Uh, the same like my dogs, I guess. Here, This is just an opinion of uh, us traveling and what we do. The reason why I say this is you can help. Like people need a home right now. Just like again, the local authorities know more about that. And if you would be in a war zone, if war would be in your home, if there are bombs in your home, you would also want to flee. You would also want to go somewhere. Well, uh, I always said when people said, oh, this is the perfect vehicle to flee from a war or whatever. Well, actually it is right now and I never thought about it, but we are not fleeing. Uh, we just live like this already a long time. Uh, since 2012, I think we are living in caravans instead of a home. And uh, yeah, but this is a way you can help. And uh, other opportunities, like giving, giving money to some official authorities, you know, that's all good. Uh, and I'm not saying that you have to help. Honestly, I hate that when somebody tells me what I need to do. A little opinion doesn't hurt. So we said that. That said, enjoy this video. I have no idea what, in what vlog we're gonna put that. So I'm really honest. This was just something that is on my heart. And thanks for listening. And if you didn't like it, leave a comment. Let me know what you liked or what you wanna hear in future. Uh, if you liked it also, you're more than welcome to like it and say what you think. But we can all, we are one world. Stop this war. This is, this is actually, we, we don't need war. We can discuss things. We can negotiate things, you know. Every day we have situations where, you know, I, I don't like this, he doesn't like this. Then you talk it out and you don't have to have an agreement, but, you know, you don't kill each other. You don't shoot each other. This is something you don't do. So thanks. This is my five cents to this uh, situation. I wish you all the best and I hope you're not living in a war zone. And to my friends in Ukraine, hey, my house is open for you. You know, uh, just let us know and uh, we will arrange something. And now we are going to a new spot. But you will see in this video uh, some wine tasting, a city that is close by here, uh, some fun that we had together. Then I hope that you enjoy. I am Isabella and I am from Brazil. This is Fabian and he is German. We've been overlanding the world with our home sweet home, Frank the Tank, for the past almost four years. And together with our son Mateo and our two lovely dogs, Uni from Spain and Basco from Germany, we are living even for before. Subscribe and welcome to the family. The weather is not the best. Then we decided to go to cold weather and this is here in two hours from us Sierra Nevada we just met some people check out who it is nice it's a big truck spoiler alert
over there we have Sierra Vegado, the other mountain. Mm -hmm. So all of our products, our wine and our olive oil, um, are, are, um, are organic and they are certified. Here we have uh, the vineyards. Over there you will see uh, that they are smaller and these ones are bigger. Why? Because these vineyards are very, very old. They are in between 40 and 60 years old. We only put um, sulfur in all the land and um, organic material. It's the only thing we put. So here Matteo's we first the wine tour. Oyster. Yes. <laughs> so here we have also vineyards, but they are uh, no beads for making wine. The, uh, here we have table grapes. We got table grapes. We have many different varieties mm -hmm. that um, are uh, from the province, from Almeria. And so we are planting all, all the varieties here. Oh, nice. Um, right now we, we will have around 40 different varieties more or less. Oh, and I don't think I never tried there. more than three yeah, types yeah. of, yeah. <laughs> of grapes. Yeah. For the insects. Ah. That's the only chunk we have. I thought it was light for the night. Water, sugar and vinegar. So with the sugar they can inside, but with the vinegar they cannot go outside. They outside. Like, get ill. And they and they die. Ah. There's also a small hole over there. Yeah. So they not they cannot go out. <laughs> we take the grapes from the land, we only use our own grapes and we put, we put it first in the wine press and we get the grape juice from a part and this is our distima and this distima um, separate the, the grapes from the scrape and we put it in a tank. Then in, in the tank, the fermentation process starts with the natural yeast that there is in the skin of the grapes. And when the fermentation finished, you have to separate all this skin that you have. So we move it again with bombs and we get only, only, the, only the juice. And for the rosé wine, we only have the, the skin with the grape juice only for eight hours more or less to get the, the color from the skin of the grapes and then we separate only the juice to make the fermentation alone. But for the red mm, wine for example we need to have it some days, maybe four or five days to get all the, all the color from the skin because the color of the, of the wine is in the skin of the grapes. It's not inside, it's in the skin. The fermentation finish and we get only the wine. And with the wine, we can do two different things. For example, um, we bottle it because it's a uh, young wine. And we can uh, put it in, in barrels to get an aging wine here. Yeah. There we have a uh, white wine and all over here we have red wine, you can see. <laughs> and we have different kind of wines. Uh, with aging and there we we make the the bottled white wine 
with uh, around six months in, in gold, in American oak wood. And here we have all the, the red, and we have three different red wines with, with wood. We have um, a bottle of red wine, which is around six months in American oak. We have the Grianfa red wine, which uh, with 12 months, one year in, in the oak. And we have also the Reserva. The Reserva is 24 months in America and French oak. Because the French oak gives different flavor and taste to the wine. Stehst du schon, Matteo? Hm? Steht ganz alleine und spielt mit den Blumen. Ja, super, machst du. Hoppala! Ja? Schön schrauben hier. Hi, and today we decided to do a little tour in this beautiful village, Laujar de Andarax. Let's see what we have here. Look at that old bull ring. Mateo is scared. Who is this man? Mama. Mama. He's not Mama. Shon and Doug for a nice day with you guys. Hi guys, thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. If you don't like, leave us a comment. <laughs> what you'd like to see don't forget to go and check our members area there you will find some videos exclusive videos that we do only for the members and now come fabian then now we go to new adventures let's see you in the next episode bye bye